Here in Australia, donating blood is pretty common. In fact, a few BTN reporters have rolled up their sleeves over the years. And you don't even know the needle's gone in. It's a little squeezy for your hand. Thank you. And today, it's my turn. Have a seat. So we'll just put this on. And while the idea of using your blood to potentially save the life of someone you've never met might seem normal, it hasn't always been that way. For a long time, blood was very misunderstood. We knew we needed it, and if you lost too much, that was bad. The idea of taking blood from one person and giving it to another, a process called transfusion, well, that took a while. If we go way back to the 15th century, there are stories about people trying to transfuse blood by drinking it. And spoiler, it didn't end well for anyone involved, but no one really knew any better. It wasn't until 1628 in Europe that a man named William Harvey worked out how blood circulated, being pumped by the heart through arteries and veins. Not long after that, a French physician named Jean-Baptiste Denis tried transferring blood from an animal to a human. That didn't end well either, and the entire process was outlawed across Europe. More than a century later, Dr William Housted successfully completed the first emergency blood transfusion in the US. His sister had lost a lot of blood in childbirth, so he quickly inserted a needle into his arm, drawing out his own and transferring it to her, and after a few minutes, she started to recover. But that was pretty lucky. It only worked because Dr Housted and his sister happened to have the same blood type. If you ever donate blood, you'll find out what your blood type is because it's a crucial element of making blood transfusions work. There are eight main blood types and they all have different kinds of antigens, which are part of our immune response when we get sick. If different types of blood are mixed together, they form clots because of these antigens and that can kill people. But that wasn't discovered until 1900 by an Austrian physician named Karl Landsteiner. Although there are stories of the Inca doing successful blood transfusions centuries before that, which may have been because there wasn't a lot of mixing between groups of people, and many in the region had the same blood type. Even after we discovered blood types, it was a long time before we worked out how to do this. Until the early 20th century, transfusions could only happen directly from person to person. That's because blood begins to clot almost immediately after coming into contact with air, which is actually pretty handy if you're injured, but not so handy if you want to store blood. But in 1916, a pair of American scientists found a way to stop blood from clotting. The discovery came just in time for World War I. Portable boxes were created to take blood that had been donated to wounded soldiers on the battlefields. After the war, these boxes became the inspiration for the modern day blood bank. Now there are blood banks all around the world, so there's supply for when we need it. And one in three of us will over our lifetime. But to keep up with demands, just here in Australia, we need more than 29,000 blood donations every week. And that's why the World Health Organization created Blood Donor Day, to recognize the importance of donors and to celebrate the medical discoveries that have saved so many lives around the world.